Okay, we can go ahead and get started. I think most people are, they may still trickle in, but thank you for joining us. We have a bit of a small group this morning, but we'll do a quick intro. My name is Michelle Knoll, and I'm in the Ansible Business Unit, and I spend most of my time uh, focusing in the domain of Edge. Um, I also work a lot with partners, uh, as you can imagine, in the, in the world of Edge. So prior to Red Hat, I've spent the past 10 or so years actually in the IoT and Edge realm. Um, prior to Red Hat, I was in the advanced analytics AI ML world um, and just very passionate about Edge uh, in general. And I think that's where, you know, you, we always hear the buzzword, of course, of digital transformation, but just the, the amount of innovation um, and, and work happening out of the Edge is world changing and life changing and super exciting. Um, so I love this topic and I'm joined by my co-presenter and colleague Chad Furman who is equally if not more excited about Edge. <laughs> so you can do a quick intro. Sure. And Michelle, Michelle is really like the one who takes all of the things out of my brain and the things that we engineer and puts out there and makes it into a palatable format. So don't let her, <laughs> if you had to see what I created as slides, it would be a bunch of stick figures with lines and no, nobody wants to look at that. So I'm the senior principal product manager for Edge and Controller in the Ansible business unit. But before, I'd say two years, two months ago, I was a customer just like a lot of you guys. So I was the enterprise architect at ExxonMobil. I ran an automation team for many years at a little company that people remember called Radio Shack, where we actually did have an automation team in the 90s. So I've uh, been doing this for a very, very long time. And yes, I'm very passionate about Edge, but I'm very passionate about how you really cannot do Edge without automating it because there are not human beings there most of the time to do the things that you need to do. So thus, our title, <laughs> Success of the Edge, starts with automation. Can you go to the next? Are you clicking? Okay. Um, we're in control. I'm in control. So, um, so we're going to do just in terms of the format for today. So we'll do an uh, overview of the market perspective, and then Chad's going to talk a little bit about uh, Ansible automation platform specifically. Um, and then I think what most people uh, love to hear about is ca our case studies, and so we have some some exciting ones to share in that regard. Um, so just in general, we'll start with what is Edge um, and Edge automation. And we have the slide in here because, um, as you have probably experienced, there's different definitions of Edge in the market, um, and that certainly varies based on the industry that you're in. Some people don't even call it Edge. So um, we like to start off by saying when we use the term Edge in this presentation and at Red Hat, we're referring to anything outside the data center. It could be um, a retail store, a factory floor, um, you know, oil rig, but anything, you know, all the way to essentially where the, the data is being generated. So real quick, while, while we have this slide up there, is there anything we're missing on here? What do you guys call Edge? Is there any anything that we're like, is Edge something different to you in your world? I actually had someone yesterday tell me that Edge to them was things not in the cloud, which I was like, okay, I'm, I'm good with that. <laughs> I realize it's right after the keynote. No, nobody, nobody is frowning or giving me a thumbs down, so we're good. Awesome. <laughs> okay. I will try and get get participation, so be prepared. You can just turn away and ignore me. It's fine. It, yeah. Oh, sir. Oh, interesting. Okay. That's actually really cool. So to, if you guys didn't hear that, so their definition of edge is what's in between the private and public networks or things like DMZ could be included in that. So that's cool. That's, all, that, yeah, that's so, and that's why I asked this question because I feel like we need to be addressing these more towards what customers think of edge than versus what Red Hat thinks of edge because you are the ones that are going to use our product. So we need to make sure that you're, we're talking in the same words that you use. So thank you. And we do like to make this interactive, as you can tell. So feel free to raise hands or chime in at any point. Um, <clears throat> so we have a quote up here from IDC, and it comes as no surprise that IT automation would be a, seen as a top um, priority for edge investment. And if you think of the very nature of edge, you can see why that is, right? We're talking about edge locations where there's going to be little or likely no IT staff. And so certainly um, IT automation is going to be top of mind to address. 
And so what are some of the challenges? So I'll talk a little bit about the challenges that we're seeing. Um, these will come probably as no surprise to you, but we can talk to you about what they mean in the context of automation. Um, and then Chad is going to um, take you through what this means in terms of Ansible automation platform specifically. So security, security and safety always um, number one on any uh, edge report or study or anything that you see, and there's no surprise um, for that. But in terms of automation, we're talking about things like running patches um, and updates and maintenance and so forth automatically, um, again, without having to send a technician to the site. Um, reducing downtime, so think about network um, here and network management and being able to simplify that. Um, and then efficiency, so really um, having that automated analysis and, and monitoring and alerting, um, and so you're reducing human error and things like that as a result. Um, and repeatability is one that Chad and I talk about a lot and just making sure that everything has the ability to be replicated um, across all of the edge environments. So are we missing anything on this one? Are there things that are more important to you than these five? We try and distill it, of course, but. <laughs> I got nods, I got the nose, so awesome. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. And so Chad is going to go through now Ansible Automation Platform specifically. Um, so real quick, just a raise of hands. Is everybody here familiar with what Ansible Automation Platform is? Okay, cool. That's. I ask that because sometimes I go into this and start talking about Ansible, and they're like, I have no idea what that is. So I figure at a Red Hat conference, we're probably good to go here, but wanted to make sure. So. Thinking about extending it to the edge, and I, I actually am glad because we do start with the cloud, and I always go left to right and right to left on this, but we're in America, we need to move this slide to go left to right, but it's okay. <laughs> so everything that Red Hat's always talked about was cloud and core data center and regional data center, but now we're really looking at and spending a lot of time in manufacturing and productions and retail and things like that. And that's where you were really starting to get into edge server, edge gateway network, edge endpoint, I'm not a salesperson, but there are different pricings depending on how far edge you guys get out there. So we have also thought that through because we know that those devices that are at the far edge, you touch once a year. And you know we wanna make sure that this is, budgetary restrictions apply when you're deploying 10,000 devices. Um, okay, this is my favorite slide because I spent a really long time making this. And, and he said he doesn't make slides. He did a good job on this. No, I didn't make this one, Daphne did. My slide was gross. She made it pretty. <laughs> Daphne's the other in our trio of Edge team and the Ansible business unit. <laughs> She's awesome. So these are all the things that we all know and love from a data center perspective that are actually, if you're wanting to do Edge successfully, so one of, one of our other cohorts that we work with came from 25 years at Walmart, and I did retail, and we always talk about these things. The big thing they worry about at Walmart, of course, is melting ice cream, because if... It, it's hilarious, but it's true because a point of sale system goes down, person can't check out, ice cream's melting. People don't want their ice cream to melt. Like that's, that's just no, that's no, no bueno. So the way that they did it and the way I did it everywhere that we worked is all of those same services that you rely on and expect to be there in a data center need to be accessible from your remote locations. That's real hard when you're talking about remote well pads and things like that. But when you're talking about a retail store or your remote data centers, you need to have DNS. I'm sorry, everybody. <laughs> DNS needs to be there. Although I talked to a manufacturer the other day and they're like, nope, we hard IP everything. And I was like, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> but you also need to have PKI because you have applications. Hopefully everybody's running HTTPS. <laughs> you want to have secure SSL connections. Those need to be able to talk to your certificate authority. You need to be able to revoke them if those are not there as well. So PKI is, uh, I mean, I, I don't think you ever knew what PKI was until you started working with me and you're probably sick of hearing me talk about it at this point. <laughs> but taking all of those things that you have over here on, on the right-hand side and making sure that it's all accessible so you can get to containers running SSL and your application layers and then having secure data transfers and pulling that data or what we're seeing a lot more of now is, and if you saw the Edge booth demo, a lot of people are doing a lot of that data analytics at the Edge, training at the Edge but you still have to take that subset of data and either train it centrally or visualize it because, I mean, as, as cool as it is to see how many bad beer bottles we had to go, you wanna know how many bad beer bottles at a KPI level so you can report that back up to your shareholders. All right, <clears throat> so supported content you can trust. 
we have tons and tons of content out there and we're one of my big goals this year is that we're working not just to provide content but we're actually working to provide solutions with this content to you guys so my biggest goal for Ansible as a platform is to make it super easy for you guys to use. So a lot of this content, we're trying to figure out how we have it accessible to you in the platform. So no more go load a project, go build an execution environment, all the fun things you have to do today. But how about it becomes more of a console experience where it's like, oh, I'm gonna automate VMware. I'm going to automate Edge. It just populates into the platform for you. Is this you or me? Oh, this one's me? Okay. So, enterprise use cases. So, of course, we're Red Hat. So, the big one that I've focused on for the past year-ish is what was announced as Red Hat Device Edge. So, the ability to push out a OS tree based or immutable type of RHEL operating system because a lot of these edge sites might be hanging off a telephone pole, might be on a well pad in the middle of nowhere, and what happens when somebody walks away with that? You don't want people to be able to get to intellectual property on there. They need to be encrypted. They need to be secure. And, you know, at the end of the day, hopefully those are inexpensive. And if somebody walks away with it, they just got the hardware, but they didn't walk away with things that you don't want them to have. So we've built this whole kind of life cycle management in an Ansible collection called Infra OS Build that we will be making into a certified collection in August with the release of Microshift where you can literally build all of the different bits and pieces into this to have true application lifecycle management, OS lifecycle management, and build all of the things that you need, whether you're in a transfer, transportation company or you're at a well pad, everything you need down the application layer can be deployed, whether it's a Kubernetes-based app, Podman, a tarball, doesn't matter. Not that any of us deploy tarballs. Anybody, anybody still do tarballs? No shame. <laughs> Does it provide the, the, your business with the money that they need at the end of the day? That's all that matters. <laughs> cool. Yeah, so I'll jump in here. So we, one of the things that, um, you know, Chad and Daphne and I, who's our other, as I mentioned, uh, partner in crime, <laughs> is that we, um, you know, what people want to know the most, right, is what does edge mean in, for me in my industry? And while industries can learn from what other industries are doing, um, we spend a lot of work over the past year, um, and one of the things involved um, in ebook where we've got chapters for each industry, we talk a little bit more about what exactly, um, or where, where we're seeing the most um, use cases right, in terms of the different industries as we talk to, to customers and partners. So I'll just cover them at a high level, and then as mentioned, we're gonna get into a few um, case studies of what specific customers are doing um, right after this as well, or in this presentation. So for um, retail, a lot of what we're seeing now um, across North America and EMEA as well um, are around modernizing point of sale systems, so we're seeing a lot of that. Um, financial services, so a lot of that is automating their application delivery um, and network security, and that's all the way out to the far edge, the ATM machines, for example. Um, and then in the industrial realm, we're also seeing automating of the application delivery um, in containers on top of RHEL. Um, and we're also seeing all the way through really the managing and configuring and auditing of, if you're in the industrial realm, you know the term PLC. Um, and HMI devices, human machine interface devices, which Chad mentioned the booth. By the way, if you have not seen the Edge booth, there's an Ansible booth and an Edge booth. Um, the Edge booth actually has um, a couple of really awesome uh, industrial demos specifically, and when, one of which you'll see an HMI device if, you, if you're not familiar with that. And, uh, so if you don't know what a PLC is, the thing that's really cool about that is that's what runs everything from an amusement park ride to a manufacturing robot. And before we did the work with um, Rockwell on this, the only way to actually do anything with those was to literally connect a serial port into them. And I can tell you, because I've been to manufacturing sites all over the world, watching a guy go around to figure out if the network is configured right on those things with a serial port is awful. But now you can actually just call the Ansible collection that's out there and now just this, the silliest things like, is it set up for actual <laughs> actual 1,000 based ethernet, which that's a huge problem, or if they're on a 10 base network, they're set to 10 base. And even things like adjusting spinning. So imagine the Superman ride, they figure out, or Spider-Man ride, they figure out that something's wrong with it, they can immediately go fix it versus shutting it down for hours and sending somebody out there to go plug in and adjust the rotations of the motors. It's 
pretty cool stuff. Good example. And I nerd out on these things. <laughs> And then these a couple of visuals just in between here before we touch on some other industries. So um, we find that, that customers tend to like to see kind of the visuals of what we mean. And there, as Chad mentioned, there's different layers of edge and different people look at it differently. The way that we're classifying it and including you know pricing structure and quantity wise as well is we have that distributed layer. Um, and so in the example of financial services, that would be like a, your bank branch server network. Um, and then the far edge as mentioned would be all the way out to things like the ATM machines. Um, and what does that mean in manufacturing? Um, distributed layer would be with that factory server network and then all the way out to the assets on the factory floor. And then retail, similarly, um, you have the store servers and network and then, um, as mentioned, one of the use cases we're seeing a lot of is out to the far edge with those point of sale systems. Um, and then, so transportation, I saw some transportation uh, logos in the, in the audience. So, um, one of the things that we're seeing a lot there is um, also around application delivery, but also automating um, intelligent devices and applications. So we're seeing that a lot. Um, we have a good healthcare example in here as well, which we'll get more into, but a lot of that is just really automating that traditional IT infrastructure at the edge. Um, and then Telco, and Chad and I were talking recently, so he's actually talked to a lot of Telco customers recently who've been looking at using automation around the underlying hardware infrastructure that's supporting 5G. I don't know if you want to touch on that anymore. 5G, 4G, 3G, <laughs> na na name, name your G. But at the end of the day, all of this still runs on your, a lot of your traditional hardware. So, and actually a lot of the 5G stuff is running on Kubernetes and depending on who you're purchasing it from, it's kind of a black box Kubernetes. So you can still use Ansible to manage that because we're great at managing Kubernetes at the end of the day. But anything from your DRAC to your network configs to setting up if you're running either virtual or containerized on the RAN. It's, I've seen it at pretty much every telco that, every major telco in the world. <laughs> oh, and the lab that's, the edge booth that's set up, it's actually running on a private 5G that we collaborated with Verizon to set up. So it's all, you can actually go and see what this looks like instead of just looking at slides and talking about cool hand wavy stuff. <laughs> Has anyone not been yet to the, the edge booth? Or yeah, if you if you have been there, anything that stood out to you that was like you didn't you know you were surprised to see or it particularly um, was intriguing or yeah, I think I think there's there's a lot of really cool stuff happening and all of it really in conjunction with partners as is obvious with when you think of it an IT landscape or technology um, landscape from, from edge to cloud is there's a lot of partners that are going to have to be involved in that. It's never going to be just kind of one vendor who has the all, you know, all inclusive edge, um, edge to cloud uh, solution. So we're working on Go look at the there. Siemens demo and tell Josh that Chad sent you and tell him you want to pull out a piece of hardware because that's actually the thing that it's doing is you can go or Schneider. And, yeah, go to the DCN yeah. and yeah. which is a distributed compute node pull it out and you can watch it see UZDA to reconfigure and redistribute the load to adjust the water valves and stuff. It's it's cool. It's the future of where things are heading, but it's cool to see that happen in spaces because those the Schneider demo is literally what's in every municipality for what wastewater management. So this is everywhere, but today it's very, very, very manual. All right, so let's get into some customer stories. Chad, do you want to do scenes? Oh, PKI. <laughs> it's PKI. It's never PKI. So we, we worked with Siemens because, of course, everything they do is running SSL. They're running secure, and they needed a way to automate not just the creation, generation, but the management of pushing all of those certs to the operating system level, to the application level, and then managing those certs and rotating the certs because really... <laughs> What a lot of people do is they'll set that time to live on a cert to be five years, which is really, really bad these days. It should be less than 365 days. But this is also why we have outages on the internet all the time. I know where I came from, we had internal outages. I know many of the cloud providers have had different outages over the past years, and it's always because somebody forgot to update a cert. So automating that is extremely important. I talked about Rockwell earlier, but we had an announcement at, at our Ansible Fest last year, and there will be some big ones at Rockwell Automation Fair this year, but they're literally white boxing Ansible into their product. And if you guys don't know who Rockwell is, 
they're kind of the people that run all the manufacturing plants in a good chunk of the world. Between them, ABB and Siemens, they're the they're the top three. But they have a, pro a product called Plant Packs, which today it sets up VMware infrastructure, it sets up Cisco switches, it sets up their applications, and it takes two to three weeks for a consultant to do that. Whereas instead, what they're doing is putting Ansible as the underlying layer to do all of this for them, but also offering it to their customers and saying, you know, this automated the plant pack stuff, but if you guys want to do other things incorporated with this, go ahead. And this came out of the blue because I was a customer that, I, mean, I came from Exxon, we used Rockwell in every single one of our manufacturing plants. And them actually using IT tools to solve OT problems is a very big step in the direction of this whole thing that we've been calling ITOT convergence for a long time, although their CTO hates that word term, he's like, no. We are taking <laughs> IT best practices and applying them to OT, <laughs> which, call it what you want, it's really cool. <clears throat> Alstom. So, do you want this one or you want me to get this one? Is there somebody from, I think there's somebody from Alstom in the audience. Do you want to tell us about what she did? <laughs> <laughs> So you're deploying all, all the apps to all the trains, et cetera, or to? Okay. Okay, so kind of on the diagram, it's kind of more of like not the far, far edge, but kind of the in-between. Right. Okay, very cool. Awesome. I'm glad that you're here. You, you actually could tell the story better than us any day. I owe this man a drink. And, and you're doing it the right way. You're taking it small chunks at a time and saying, okay, inventory because today you don't probably don't have one. <laughs> and then from that inventory, what versions of software are you running? Yep, very, very cool. Nice, we'll have to talk later. <laughs> uh, Schwartz, yeah, I'll take this one. So if you're not familiar with Schwartz, they're the fourth largest retailer. Um, they have over 12,000 stores. They operate in over 30 countries. Um, and so what they were looking to do with automation is really ensuring the consistency and the store management across the, the stores globally. Um, and they were able, with, with Ansible, able to implement this um, centralized strategy across all the stores. So you, they were able to do improved um, delivery time for new, innovative um, digital applications and services. Um, and they were also able, one of the things that was important to them is they need to be able to support local markets. Um, and they were able to do that with Ansible through decentralized management. Um, and then they, one, another thing that was really important to them with Ansible is they really needed to have full end-to-end um, -end enterprise support. So they were big proponents of we have to have Ansible automation platform in order to, in order to have that. Any retail uh, customers in the audience? Any, any edge use cases or thoughts to share? Okay. <laughs> I think I know who you guys are. You have fantastic meatballs. <laughs> that's that's not an uncommon thing that I hear from a lot of the retailers is that there are pockets and depending on what country or who do set it up because there's different integrators that set different things up that it's just yep that, that that is probably one of the biggest challenges i think for anyone in retail especially globally cool. i would love to talk to you about that though <laughs> so one thing that i should say about automation mesh that most people don't know that we did not do a great job of advertising that i've been pushing is it does not have to be bi-directional most and a lot of people have always come to me and be like, "We need this way to connect, but we don't want to have any traffic go in and out." You can actually set up mesh to only do 
traffic up, which is very, especially in manufacturing, very important. Thank you for sharing. All right, Chad, you want to do healthcare? What is this one? HTA. Oh, yeah. So this, they're actually doing some cool stuff of pulling in um, clinical data with this. So they're they're taking data, and of course, PCI and moving PCI data, or you know, depending on where you are at. My world was always about GDPR data and data sovereignty, depending if you're in Malaysia or Russia, etc. But they automated the ability to kind of get everything and manage the data using Ansible, which I think. If you think about a data for healthcare, or if you think about back to AI models and how do you distribute AI models out to many different endpoints, retail is a big one. That you, there's actually a demo of retail using AI to detect the the, the um, merchandise that you're purchasing. But a big one is, of course, loss prevention. And I talked to a grocery store about this, and they t they said that um, their biggest problem is they sell way more bananas than they have in stock. And if you think about it, it's because when somebody goes to purchase a vegetable, I mean, a banana is probably the cheapest thing on there. They throw the banana on, or they throw whatever it is they're actually buying, and then they type banana code, and then they move on. So being able to distribute a model that can detect a banana versus an eggplant versus a mushroom is hard to do across 5,000 locations. And I think this is a great one to end on, too. I think this is our last case study. Um, and we have time, I believe, about 15 minutes where we can um, do you know, some questions and interaction. But I love this healthcare in general, right? Because as I mentioned in the opening, it's like we, we have edge and there's life-changing and literally life-saving. You know, these technologies work together. It can really um, do some amazing things. And that's why we will continue to live on the edge <laughs> in our jobs, because um, it's super exciting. Um, and you've seen that even just with the safety and things working at, at your previous employer, um, you know, a lot of dangers there in the industrial realm and uh, the things that the technologies are doing to make sure that people go home at the end of the day um, are super. Well, and I was speaking to somebody earlier that they're in the healthcare manufacturing business and if you think about it, they could be creating pacemakers, stints for hearts, things that, you know, one of us that someday hopefully don't have to have, but I, I would love to know that they have a secure way of doing all of the things that they're doing. So it's cool to see that people are really kind of honing in on the security aspects of Edge because it's important in the data center. It's real important when you're manufacturing pacemakers. <laughs> cool. Is all that right. it? That is all of awesome. our slides. Questions? Um, or actually, we had, Chats? actually, I should oh. say that. We did have, we had one more. We did add a portfolio. Because um, certainly with uh, Ansible is not the only uh, Red Hat solution involved in, in Edge, um, that a lot of customers are starting with Ansible in many cases, but um, we do have a full um, Edge portfolio of, uh, of solutions. And so we're working a lot with the OpenShift team as well as the RHEL team. Um, Chad mentioned Device Edge, um, which was announced and will be GAing um, soon, which is a, a portfolio, more of a portfolio offering. And that'll actually include Ansible, RHEL, and uh, Microshift. Don't have to use Microshift, don't have to use Ansible, don't necessarily have to use RHEL, but it's a very kind of, we wanted to have a portfolio offering where you can just buy one SKU that handles all your edge things. And that's with you as you grow and expand and yep. et cetera. All right, any um, questions or, yes? Sir. Nuta Nutanix? So, I uh, know it's all good. No, I, I've, I worked with them when I was a customer quite a bit. So we're, we're working with them on pilot and within the healthcare, within the uh, mm -hmm. So what have you accomplished with them thus far? So we have fully, sort of, uh, fully certified collections. So if you use Ansible with that collection that they provide to build and do, so the thing that's great about Nutanix, they have their Calm, API and everything, so this really talks into the Calm API and the, and the things that they have there. But Nutanix doesn't configure your network. Nutanix doesn't configure all the other bits and pieces that you may need for this. So the way we did it, I'm, I'll just tell you how I did it as a customer, because I think that's what is important to you. We used Ansible to call all of the different bits and pieces to make it a full workflow for a deployment at a site. So you deliver a rack of servers with switches, with all the different configurations, it gets all racked up, 
plugged in and mounted. Ansible connects up, sets up your network, sets up your VLANs, builds everything you need on the Nutanix side, so you're just up and running with everything you need. So one, one way was somebody put Ansible to me recently, which I, which I really liked, is, is we have the ability to take all of the different management consoles and put them all into a single pane of glass where you can just automate all the things. We work, obviously work very closely with IBM. Yes. <laughs> and uh, Cyber, CyberArk, I, that's what we use where I came from as well, and it works, it works great. Okay. Yeah, we, we, we checked in and checked out usernames and passwords. And when I say checked in and checked out, checked out, used it, reset the password every time we, we used one. Yeah, no problem. That's a very good question. Anyone Any else? Questions, questions, thoughts, use cases to share. So there is a project that two good friends of mine that are working on called Leap. So and the, the so Leap is a part of Rel. We've built Ansible collections to do Leap for you. So there, there's a bunch of Ansible collections. That I can get you some links for all of it, but we, we're actually certifying that content where you can do in-place upgrades. Yep. And a lot of that has to depend on which application you're running because of the way OS tree works and the immutable aspects of it. But we're actually looking at stuff around OS tree because, of course, like to get a little technical slash opt today in an OS tree image is not writable. How do we possibly do a container layer there? So yeah, there's there's a lot of really cool, come to my next session, we're gonna talk a ton about OS tree. <laughs> Yes, it is. Inventory is always a challenge. What, what is your CMDB? Who's the actual truth teller in this one? Yep. So would you like something like a smart mesh? Is that kind of what you're talking about? I have a PRD already in for that. This, these are things that I've, because of where I came from, these are things I'm always thinking about because connectivity is always a question and having the ability for the mesh to do things like that. So I actually have a developer that is currently working on these type of things. So yes. And, Inventorying, uh, when you say inventorying of devices, could that be anything from RHEL to network to name your, name your poison? Everything. Everything, go. I can only affect so much outside of the Red Hat world, but that is something, we actually had a project to basically map entire networks at one point and it was canceled, but maybe I can bring that back up if I have enough customers that want it. Yes and no, it would need bi-directional. So the mesh is actually smart enough to talk between mesh nodes. So it would need bi-directional to the controller if it didn't have enough information, but this goes to the thing that you and I were talking about earlier about, we we're actually working on the ability to schedule execution at the mesh or execution plane for if you do have bad network connectivity. So at that point, the mesh would be able to talk as long as it was on the same network. So if you had two mesh nodes in the same network, it should be able to talk, but these are all things that are not existent, but I'm just giving you guys where kind of roadmap ideas of things that we're thinking about. And the more 
feedback that we get that this is something you need, that helps me talk to my, my friends in engineering about making these things happen. We have, a, we have, we have an engineer in the back. He's, he's probably looking at me with cold, cold eyes right now. <laughs> Actually, is available in the upstream today. I don't know what are, where we're at with making it certified. I know that it's it is in work, but I know that we've done it for two major financial institutions using the upstream stuff, and that's kind of where I really I hesitate on making something certified until we've had actual customers use things because we have really good engineers, but they don't run into the same things that you guys are going to run into at scale because we could scale a lot. But then there's always those weird things that, you know, practices that we've created over the past 20 years that make things a little bit more difficult. But I was asking if there's like actually an idea of which one you're targeting for certification first. Six, seven. Six, seven, seven, eight, because those are the ones that are going out of, going end of life or already are end of life. But beyond that, we just call your. Yeah, sure. Yeah, we need to get better at communicating this stuff out and have better channels, but also all of us are so we get so much information all the time that I'm not going to send you another email. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't want another email. <laughs> oh, cool. No, that's good feedback. Thank you. The other thing, we, we don't have a, a slide on this, but you heard a lot. You've heard a lot. If you were at main stage yesterday um, or any of the breakouts or labs or Ansible Fest uh, main stage yesterday, you heard a lot about event driven Ansible. And that certainly is a, a feature that spans all of the, the domains that we work on um, in Ansible, including Edge. And so a lot of things that Chad and I have been talking about and writing about are around, a lot of it around um, root cause analysis and then um, automated remediation. I don't know, Chad, if you want to touch on some of the event-driven stuff you've seen with customers. Yep, so EDA was another one. We actually did that with a customer before we even thought about bringing it in to do this as part of the platform. It was one of the large financial institutions. And what they really did, and I always want to stress this with people, they didn't just go and start auto fixing switches and devices and things like that. They updated tickets. And I think that's like, the, I ran a help desk at one point in my career and believe me, level one support is a terrible job because you get a message, it tells you something's broken and then you have either a script or the knowledge to go and run a thousand commands to get the information you need. Let's just have EDA do that. It runs a playbook, it goes and runs that script, gets that information. Your level one support just became level two support, which is fantastic. Or, you know, eventually you say, okay, every time this happens, this happened a thousand times, maybe then you get to that auto remediation step. But think that through, because automation is great until automation is not great. I saw automation wipe SSH keys off of every box when I worked at one place, and that was not good. <laughs> Well, I think we'll wrap up a couple minutes early. Thanks, everyone. We can stay after for any one-on-one uh, -on -one questions. Yeah. If, Thank if you. If there's, there's crazy stuff you want to talk about, I love this. Thank you. <laughs>